Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well and welcome back to the channel. It's time for another War Thunder Sim tutorial and today I'm going to show you some tips for destroying ground targets, be that with cannons, bombs or rockets. Hopefully you find this video useful and if you do please consider dropping a like and subscribing to the channel for more sim content in the future. Now depending on what game mode you play, be that ground sim or enduring confrontation, your potential targets will vary, however the methods that I'll be showing you today can apply to either game mode. Now across game modes you have got quite the variety of targets, some are going to be static and some are going to be more mobile. The general methods for getting ordnance on target however will roughly remain the same no matter what you're attacking. Now if you're looking at improving your ground attack skills, doing so in a live game against other players whilst thrilling often isn't the most effective use of your time. My recommendation is to create a custom game and I personally recommend the following setup. Go into custom battles, create a new session, scroll down to the ground strike missions and select the French coast. Set it up for 4 players and include bots at rank 1 difficulty. The reason why I say 4 is so that the match doesn't end due to ticket bleed if you are swapping between aircraft in the menu. Now don't forget to set a password so that other people don't gate crash on your practice as well. Now why the French coast? Well it spawns every possible target that you will come across in sim except for actual players. It will spawn bombing targets, ground units, pill blockses and naval units. It's perfect basically. Now that we've got the game set up, let's get to work. First we'll look at using bombs. There are two main approaches here, you have glide bombing and you have dive bombing. Glide bombing tends to be the most common method in War Thunder due to the nature of the game and the pace of combat so I'll cover that first. In a nutshell, it involves approaching your target at an angle, roughly between 35 and 45 degrees, releasing your bombs and pulling up and away. Sounds pretty easy, but it's quite difficult in practice and that's why I'm here. Now I have three golden rules when it comes to yeeting bombs at my enemies. Rule number one, approach at an angle between 35 and 45 degrees. Now you don't have any way of measuring your approach angle so it is a case of eyeballing it, something that will get better with practice. Rule number two, line up your target in your crosshair. Now providing you're holding a somewhat steady angle, the target will slowly move down your reticle. When your target passes through the very bottom of the reticle is when you should release your bomb. Rule number three. This approach is easier and more accurate the closer you get to your target, so release your ordnance as close as possible without wrecking your plane in the process. It's a pretty foolproof technique and it works with bombs of different sizes and weights. Now different bombs will fall slightly differently due to their shape and mass, however if you release relatively close to your target and at a decent speed, this should have minimal effect on your overall accuracy. Remember. The closer you are to your target and the higher your speed, the more accurate your drops will be using this technique. This technique also works for the few aircraft that lack central gun sights, such as the TBD-1 you see here. You simply replace the bottom of the gun sight for the top of the aircraft's nose. Now this may require a wee bit of trial and error, but as you can see here, I was getting accurate bomb drops and kills even with these small 100 pound bombs. A final note before we move on, if you are bombing moving targets, don't forget to aim where your enemy is going to be and not where it currently is, otherwise you'll just be making expensive holes in the ground. Dive bombing is less common in War Thunder as most aircraft that was designed for dive bombing have relatively low cruising speeds which makes them pretty easy targets for other players. That being said, dive bombing can still be a lot of fun when you get the hang of it. Now most dive bombers have a small window in the floor to let you see your target when it is almost directly below you, something to bear in mind here. Now you should begin your bombing run when you are directly over your target. Either roll over or pitch your nose down and get into a vertical dive. Don't forget to extend your air brakes otherwise you're in for a one way trip into the ground. Line up your target in your crosshair and be sure to consider any slight forward momentum that may carry your bomb off target. When you get to between 500 and 750 meters above target, you should release your bomb. The bomb release mechanism for dive bombers is often a bit slower due to the nature of the design, so make sure that your bomb is clear and falling before you pull out of your dive. It's a pretty straightforward maneuver, 
However, due to the hitboxes of some targets in the game, I recommend only dive bombing with ordnance above 500kg. That way, if your bombs are slightly off target, there's still a good chance of destroying them. Now, let's move on to guns and cannons. I'm going to talk about suitable targets first, and then we'll talk about aiming. If you decide to go ground pounding with machine guns, your choices of targets is somewhat reduced due to your lack of penetrating and explosive firepower. You should focus on soft targets such as AAA emplacements, artillery positions, and light vehicles. It is highly recommended that you use ground target belts for these, especially armoured cars, as the other belts will require more rounds to destroy a target, particularly if you are using rifle calibre ammunition. Now there is one big exception to all of this. If you have an aircraft with 50 calibre machine guns and you have ground target belts, you can also go around popping light pillboxes as well. This is something that the American aircraft such as the P-47 and P-51 are particularly good at. In fact, with their good bomb loads, they are the perfect aircraft for attacking ground units for enduring confrontation games, as you can bomb tanks and then pop pillboxes and artillery positions with your guns and near infinite amount of ammunition. Things get a bit more interesting with cannons, and that is due to the sheer variety that is found. Now, 20mm cannons should be treated the same as 50 cals. Use them on soft targets, light vehicles, and light pillboxes, providing you have ground target belts. Cannons between 23mm and 40mm can be used on tougher targets, but not all cannons are built equally. Some aircraft have cannons that are designed to destroy other aircraft, and those will not be very good in the ground attack role. The easiest way to check what sort of cannon your aircraft has is to look at its ammunition belts and shell velocities. Cannons on ground attackers tend to have higher velocity armour piercing rounds as a loadout option, whereas cannons designed for destroying aircraft tend to lack ground target belts and usually have lower shell velocities. If your aircraft has a gun that is 50mm or larger, you can pretty much target whatever you want as long as you have ground target belts as an option. So how do you get good accuracy when using guns and cannons, and how do you destroy targets effectively? Well, again, I have some golden rules. Rule number one. The most important rule is to have your rudder control set up nice and smooth. During your attack run, you may need to make minor course adjustments, and having an overly twitchy rudder will ruin your aim. If you're a mouse and keyboard player, and thus unable to adjust the sensitivity of your rudder, I recommend getting a clear enough attack run as possible. By that, I mean get yourself on course nice and early so that you'll need to make minimal adjustments as you get closer to target. Rule number two, attack vehicles and tanks from the side. This is for two reasons. Reason 1, the vehicles are always weaker from the sides, so you will get kills easier. Reason 2, they present a larger target from this angle and are thus easier to hit. Rule number 3, get as close to your target as possible. This reduces shell drop and increases penetration on impact. Any aircraft with high velocity armour piercing rounds larger than 23mm should be able to kill medium and heavy tanks from the side when aimed correctly. The German and Russian tech trees have the most numerous aircraft when it comes to cannon casts, notable examples being the IL-237, the Su-5, the ME-410 and the DOE-335. Now some aircraft in the game have insanely large cannons, and the two most notorious ones being the HS-129 Duck and the P-108A. I personally think these two aircraft are best used in enduring confrontation games where you have large ground battles with plenty of tanks to destroy. The Duck has a 75mm cannon, and not to be outdone, the P-108A has a 102mm cannon. Here are my tips for using these oversized weapons. Get your aircraft as low as possible, and line up your target so that when it's a couple of hundred metres away, it should be slightly below the centre of your crosshair. Usually around the first or second pit mark if you're using the Duck, if you're using the 108A, you kind of have to eyeball it. Now the shells on these two aircraft have relatively high velocities at this range, and with practice they can be very easy to aim with and very satisfying to use. To make things easier, consider the direction of your target's route, and adjust your course accordingly to reduce the amount of rudder input required when you get close to target. Out of the two, I do prefer the P-108A because of two things. 
One, it doesn't have the telescopic sight, which is a pain to aim with, and two, it carries 50 rounds of ammunition compared to just 14 with the duck, meaning you can afford to miss a shot or three and it won't be a total disaster. Perhaps the hardest ground attack method to master is the use of rockets, the performance of which vary widely depending on what era they were built in. With that in mind, let's look at the older rockets first, which are the ones mostly used in the Second World War. These early rockets are without a doubt the hardest to master. They have relatively poor accuracy and each rocket's flight path will be a bit different from the previous one. A general rule of thumb for aiming is to line up your target halfway between the middle and the bottom of your reticule if you're approaching from an angle of between 30 to 45 degrees, give or take. This will usually put your rockets on target, but as you can see here, the margin for error when it comes to taking out heavy and medium tanks is very small. Unlike bombs, your rockets will have to physically hit the target to do any damage, and so it is advisable to fire between two and four at any given target to increase the chance of getting a kill. For this reason, I prefer to use my rockets against light vehicles when flying World War II aircraft. Trucks and armored cars are easier to destroy as the splash damage from the rocket hitting nearby is often enough to destroy them if you don't score a direct hit. Now things get infinitely easier once you move into the Cold War aircraft. The rockets you can use have significantly higher velocities, which makes them more accurate, and you also, on average, get more rockets in your loadouts, especially if you are using the Mighty Mouse rocket pods. In top tier sim games, America is definitely the top contender when it comes to using rocket pods for this very reason. Your method of aiming your rockets will depend on whether or not your aircraft has a ballistic computer. If you don't have one, then the method of aiming is somewhat similar as before. Line up your target somewhere between the middle and the lower portion of your reticule and fire to see where the rockets land. As most aircraft will have more than a dozen rockets under their wings, you can afford a couple of ranging shots to find out where you should be aiming. These newer rockets are also much easier to aim at range thanks to their higher velocities as you can see here. Things are even easier if your aircraft comes with a ballistic computer. Simply activate it and switch the gun sight mode to rockets and your gun sight will show you where your rockets will land. All you need to do is line up your target in the gun sight and fire. It's as simple as that. I would still recommend firing off a few rockets at once to allow for flight deviation, but apart from that, you really don't have much else to worry about. Destroying ground targets will get easier the more you practice, so I heartily recommend setting up a custom game and trying things out if you are struggling with certain aircraft. Not all bombs, rockets and cannons work the same, and you may need to adjust your method to meet the aircraft you're using. However, I hope this video served as a sort of foundation to help you improve your chances of success, and if you have any follow-up questions, please feel free to comment below. Our next War Thunder Sim tutorial will be focusing on the use of manual engine control, so stay tuned for that in the near future. But until then, that is all for the, today's video. I hope you all very much enjoyed it, and thank you all very, very much for watching, and I will catch you all next time. Goodbye.